Hi, this is Alan Gleason for Crossfader. In this video, I want to show you Isotope's Tonal Balance Control plugin that comes with Neutron 2 Advanced and Ozone 8 Advanced. Tonal Balance Control is a spectrum analysis tool that, according to Isotope, they created it to help you get your mix and master to sit just right across the frequency spectrum. Visual analysis tools are incredibly useful in sound design, mixing, and mastering. They don't replace fundamental production techniques and critical listening, rather, they support the process confirming what you are hearing and help you creating great sounding, tonally balanced music. They can also help if your mixing environment is not perfect or if you're working on headphones. Even before tools such as tonal balance control, it has always been good advice to use reference music when you're mixing and mastering. It helps keep your ears tuned in based on songs that you know have a good frequency balance. This is what tonal balance control is simulating in visual form. Tonal balance helps you make decisions regarding the frequency balance in your mix. It helps you to understand, analyze and correct issues. This can relate to the frequency content of your entire mix or individual tracks. It can also help you when setting levels and the balance of tracks or sections, with these changes to the spectral energy in your mix being reflected in tonal balance control. What is a well-balanced mix can be somewhat subjective. In order to introduce what the device does, I have selected a number of tracks to analyze. I find each of these tracks to be well-balanced and I've also DJed with them and they translate well on big sound systems. So I'll play a short segment of each of these tracks. Now how tonal balance control works is that you set a target and based on analysis that Isotope have done it will relate to how your track fits in to that particular frequency spectrum for that target. So the targets that come with it are modern, orchestral and bass heavy. So because I'm going to be analysing dance music I'm going to put it on bass heavy. And ideally what you want to see is these floating white lines here. You want to see them within this particular range here. So the ranges are divided into low, low mid, high mid and high and the setting is on broad. You can also set it to fine and this shows how the frequency of your track represented by the white line here fits in to this particular target. So you can see in some areas it's approaching the limit and in other areas it's gone below the minimum. This is all subjective and what I find more useful when I'm working on a particular mix or a particular set of mixes is to set up my own targets. So I'll just analyze these different tracks here and see how they relate. Play back, back again. So you can see in this one here that it's saying that the bass is maybe too much. The other ranges are kind of within. Give it a few seconds to adjust. This track is a bit light compared to the other one. And that's reflected there, but as I said, for me, the, the track itself sounds well balanced. The highs there are a bit excessive. Have a listen to another track. So it's generally falling in the area that we want to see. This section here in our low frequency is this crest factor here. If it's too much to the left, it's signifying that the mix is too dynamic. Some elements might be lost in that particular frequency range or masked by other sections. And if it's too much to the right, it may be over compressed or too much limiting applied. You can see this is in there, a very good zone here. Uh, excessively compressed or too dynamic. So that's generally falling in a, in a good range there. Maybe the bass is gonna creep up there. Switch over to another track. Just give it a few seconds to adjust. Maybe telling us there that the high mids are not as high as they should be. But again, this is subjective, and these presets have been created by Isotope analyzing a number of tracks that they think fit into that particular category. What I find is more useful is creating your own targets. If you select this here, you can select create a custom target curve from a single audio file or create a custom target curve from a folder of audio files. So what you can do if you're working on a particular mix 
and you have a single track or a number of tracks that you think fit the frequency spectrum of that particular track, you can either select the track or you can select create custom target curve from a folder of files. So I've done this already. I put about 150 files in a folder and I analyzed that folder. They're all pretty much deep house tracks. And when that analysis was complete, I clicked on this save custom balance curve as here. And I saved that as deep house. So now I can select that from here. So now when I play my first track again, let's move over there. You can see the bass is more within the range and maybe listen to some of her other tracks. They were, short, they were showing up more in the extremes. They're more central now. This one's still saying maybe a bit too much high end in it. The slight issue I found with this technique is that because I analyzed so many files, you can see that the base range here is quite large, the dynamic range of it, and also for the high end. So if you're working on a particular track, what might be more useful is to just analyze one particular track or maybe four or five tracks that are a real target that you want to aim for with that particular track so that you'll have a smaller dynamic range here within that particular frequency range. So as I mentioned, you've got two ways to split up your frequency spectrum. When it's in broad, you've got the low, low mid, high mid and highs. And when it's in fine, you can get a more detailed view of how your frequency spectrum relates to that particular target one. When you're playing your mix, you can also hold down the option key. And when you click, you can solo that particular frequency range to help you isolate maybe where you might want to EQ or where a frequency area that you think has issues that you might want to address. If this was a mix that I was working on and I thought maybe, okay, the highs on this track are a bit excessive, what you can do then, of course, is then go and address that with EQ. So go to the particular track that I want to address and I've already got Newton 2 on this track. So we'll call it up. I've named it as get down and we can see we have our EQ curve here. So I'll go back to my master channel where I have tonal balance control inserted. And now what I can do from here is that in the bottom left hand corner, I can actually select a plug in on a particular track. So I've got Neutron on two tracks. So I'll select get down, which is the one we want to address. And when I do that, the EQ of Neutron 2 for that particular track now appears here at the bottom. So I could just implement a shelving EQ there. This would be maybe using it more in a mastering situation. Where you want to control some of those, globally control some of the high end. And then in the mid there, if I wanted to scoop out some of that there. See, not that extreme. wanted to know exactly where to dial in I can go into my fine view and you can see more accurately any kind of peaks or troughs that you might want to address if I wanted to pull maybe that more back into the central I could grab this here now this is, isn't something that I would want to do in this mix but I'm just showing this for demonstration purposes you can see it's starting to come down there now That's an example of how you might want to use it when you're working on a two track mix, such as in mastering. So I'll switch over to this session here where I've got more of a mix setup that I'm working on, very early stages, not much processing being applied. And again, I've got tonal balance control on my master channel. And because I've got Neutron 2 inserted on a number of these tracks in the bottom corner, now when I select a plugin, I can select any one of the tracks here that have Neutron 2 installed on it. So we'll have a listen to our mix. I'm using the bass heavy target. Let's see what happens if I switched over, say, something like the modern. Or orchestral. You can see different target areas been set up. So none of them are appropriate for this type of mix. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it to my deep house and just use this as a guide. If I felt that the, the bass range was been a bit excessive, I can maybe address some of these issues. Obviously, by just adjusting the levels, maybe if I brought down my kick drum, I'll give it a few seconds to update. 
you can see the target been affected here. The white line indicating that there's less base energy in there. If I bring my kick back up and you'll see that gone back up. So it's going to be useful just for when you're setting levels, getting a balance on your mix. So now I'm reducing the base. And you'll see that been reflected. If I wanted to maybe bring up my highs a bit more, I could address what contains high frequency content in the mix. So my high frequency percussion there maybe, I start to boost that. You can see this line here start to increase. You can hear that I'm addressing whole sections there. So I might want to actually focus in on a particular frequency range rather than just changing the level of the whole track. So what I could do is select the plugin on that track. So I'm pushing. And I can just give it a bit of shelving EQ. Bring up some of that high end. Or I could dress it with more of a parametric EQ. And really focus in on the area that I want to address. The other thing that you can use this tool to do is resolve masking issues. So again, go back to my bass range again. Obviously the two frequency areas that are going to be focused in there would be our kick drum and our bass. So what I can do is look at my kick drum. Kick, or I can look at the bass. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select the kick. So you're going to go to the device here. Here's a Neutron 2. I've got this masking option here. So when I turn this on, select what I want to compare this with or resolve masking issues with. So I'm going to select the base. So now we're seeing the two EQ curves at the same time. The top one is the kick one. The low one is our base. And then these white areas that have been illuminated are where we possibly have masking issues. So I can EQ them individually or I can turn on the inverse link and what this does now that if I give a boost in one area, then we have a cut in another area. So it's always better to have okay, the kick dominate in this lower frequency area, and then you could maybe scoop out a bit in the kick there by giving a boost in the bass. So I'll just go back to tonal balance control. only looking at the kick at the minute but I know because I'm in inverse link here it is still adjusting the base there so here I'm resolving issues between the kick drum and the bass to get them sit better in the mix so as you're working on your mix you can stay focused in tonal balance control here and be switching between the different tracks bring up your percussion say or some of the other elements that you have in the mix and addressing them and see how the, the changes reflect the overall tone balance of your mix. Because I've got Ozone 8 also installed on my master channel here, I can also view this within tonal balance control. If I go to my device menu here, I can see that I've got Ozone. So now when I select that, it brings up the EQ that's in Ozone 8. Now I find this useful for just doing general analysis. So because I'm EQing the whole mix here, sweep around, be listening to different changes, how it's affecting the balance of the mix. Now if I hear something that I like or I don't like in a particular instrument on a particular track, then I can reset that and then go to that particular track and address that issue. Once your mix is complete, then you can start working on your master from within your mix. But just because you can do that doesn't mean you should do it. To get the most out of the mixing and mastering process, I feel that you should do them as separate processes. But you can use this technique as almost like a pre-master to analyze what the mastering process might sound on your mix. So tonal balance control is an incredibly powerful tool to help get your mixes and masters frequency content balance. So it'll translate well to different types of formats and listening environments and help your mixes sound as professional as the ones in your music collection. This has been Alan Gleason for Crossfader. To keep up to date on our new videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and turn on that notification bell.